What's up, guys? My name is Dylan Tucker with Tucker's Power Washing, and uh, I'm just want to make this video about the uh, coil on the GX390 right here, <clears throat> which is this one. This is the one that comes on it, and this was a pull start only. This was a pull start only. And uh, we broke the pull cord on it, and uh, it was really dark and late, and uh, I didn't feel like taking it off, and, you know, fixing the pull cord and putting it back together and everything. So came home after the job and everything, <clears throat> went back next day, uh, knocked everything out with my other pressure washer, and uh. I decided that I would install an electric start on uh, electric starter on my pressure wash uh, motor, this GX390 uh, Honda GX390. So uh, I'm just going to walk y'all through what all I had to do. This is not final right now. None of this is made up permanent. Uh, it's just is what it is until. Uh, I get some more wiring and, and make it look really neat and everything. Uh, I just want to show everybody this while I got it broke down. So maybe to help y'all out because I'm telling you, I struggled. I struggled pretty bad with it for a little bit until I got the new coil in. Uh, but what, what I'm talking about is this coil that comes on it originally has a plug right there. And let's see, where is it right here? This is <clears throat> the plug that goes onto that, snaps onto there. And these wires right here, the yellow one goes to the uh, oil switch and this red and black goes to the kill switch. It's just a open and close uh, contact. Um, so, uh, let's see. When, when I had this on there, this is before I had the other, this coil right here, this new one. When I had this one on here, uh, I had to drill, I had to drill this out, this hole out for the, for the starter to go into. Um, there's no, there was no instructional video on YouTube. So I'm hoping this helps people out. So I had to drill this hole out, right? Install the starter. Uh, I had to pull the old flywheel off. I don't know where I put it, but anyways, the old flywheel didn't have the teeth on it. So <clears throat> I had to put this new one on with the teeth and I put it all back together. Um, I left off the charging coil because uh, I got a uh, automatic charger for my battery that when I, when I get home after a job, I just plug it up. Uh, outside my house and it charges the battery. So I, I ain't really worried about the charger cool. So I just left it off because I was going to have to tap holes and all that crap. So I just left it off. Um, so uh, anyways, installed everything, put the new flywheel back on, starters on, mounted this. Uh, I went to wiring this, which there's no print from this Chinese piece of crap uh, off-brand uh, switch. There was no uh, wiring diagram. I couldn't find one on Google that was even similar to this because all the wire colors like were different and stuff. So I'm gonna kind of walk y'all through what I have right here. So when it came, it came with all the connectors already on it. So this spade right there was already on there, the female spade. So uh, looking around, it can only go one place right here on the solenoid. So we put that on there and then this uh, red wire right here, it's got this sleeve on it. Uh, I just assumed that it went on that side of the uh, solenoid also. And um, I knew it had to have power going to it. So I ran my uh, positive from my battery over here to the one side of the solenoid and then the other side the negative on the battery to the ground uh just to the frame of the motor okay so <clears throat> getting past that the ground wire of course went to ground 
Okay, so then I have this wire right here, this black wire that has a little, um, uh, it's like a little split off of it that has a female on it. So, uh, as you go up through there, I don't know if you can see, but that right there, uh, that, that is a male to a female on the coil side going to it so this one black wire comes up and it splits off uh one leg drops down to the oil switch and the other leg goes to the coil and basically all that does is if your oil gets too low this makes contact with the ground in inside of here uh somehow this closes the circuit uh like the oil the low oil uh level once it gets low uh, somehow that's a switch and it opens up or, or it closes and it makes contact with ground which shorts out the coil which kills the motor <clears throat> so it does basically the same thing as uh cranking this up and putting this off switch to off it um when you put this off switch to off it takes this wire right here it's following from the coil it's feeding everything to fire okay it goes through the switch and goes to ground when you turn it off that kills the uh the power to the cool doesn't allow it to fire kills the motor okay so then i have this white wire right here um i'm guessing this went to the charging cool uh because it's got a uh, little diode on it some type of diode or resistor i think it's a diode Yes, I know. Yeah, uh, I think it went to the charging coil, so I, I ain't even worried about that. I ain't hooking that up or nothing. I'll, I'll dress that up, and fix it up. But yeah, that's how it's wired. So the reason why I had so many problems is when, when you have this one, this right here, this old one that comes off of it, that's just for a kill switch, it does not go with this right here. There's no way you can make it work because I originally started with this red and black wire on this white one and this black one. This doesn't make a circuit so uh, your coil can't fire because the way this worked is I had a kill switch in between here. <clears throat> and when you uh, connected the circuit, it uh, allowed the coil to fire. When you disconnected the circuit, turn the switch off it uh, lost fire in the coil so that's that was crazy to me that um, it said when I bought this starter and everything that it was compatible and uh, it didn't say anything about that the coil was not compatible so I had to buy another coil stick it on there and figure all this stuff out myself so uh, put the new coil on there um, I wired it up and everything and you know it fires up and it cranks up now i'll show you real quick fires up just fine works great so uh yeah big headache if there's nothing on there to tell you how to wire it up and everything um i had my meter out i was you know i'm an electrician uh, so I had my meter out and I was checking, you know, continuity between this white and black one. I was like, it's got to close the circuit. And then, uh, my stepdad, he was like, nah, he's like, it's, uh, he said on them old, uh, pressure washers or the, not old pressure washers. He's like, them old motors, the coil gets grounded. That's how it kills the coil. And I was thinking with, I was like, that's not how this, this one is wired. I was like, how? Like it didn't make sense. I was like, this this is never grounding, you know? It's just making the circuit. It's just these two wires are connecting. That's how it's fire. And when you don't want it to fire, you open up the circuit. I was like, I don't, I was like there's, it can't be just grounding out, but sure enough it is. There's the other side of that spade terminal that goes up, that one wire that connects to this black wire right here that has that little jumper on it. So, I hope that helps somebody uh, that just bought this uh, part. And yeah, um, like, subscribe. I appreciate y'all tuning in. 
and watching this um i'm gonna try to get some more videos out on my pressure washing setup and everything i got it kind of covered up until i can get a shop some kind of canopy uh garage whatever over this thing um it's been raining the past couple of days but yeah i'm gonna try to get some more videos out and how i got everything set up and uh how i operate everything so yeah, appreciate y'all guys, and y'all have a good one.